questions from lesson two. Yeah, Zay. Sorry, question eight? Okay. Now, I told you question eight was an A plus, A minus, A level. This is a tough question. This will be one of the old scholarship ones, okay? I think the point, for, first of all, Zay, by, by the way, I think I've told you these were typed up in Word 1995 for Mac, and they're slowly getting worse and worse. That is supposed to be micro Coulomb. Somehow they're becoming smooshed together. I'm going to have to eventually retype all these diagrams, but that's several thousand diagrams, and it's not something I'm looking forward to. So I'm kind of whittling away at it bit by bit, piece by piece. Anyhow, Zay, first of all, I realized that this is sending an electric field to the right. This is sending an electric field to the left. They're in opposite directions, so they will cancel each other out. I said, what is this one's electric field? Well, the electric field from this charge is going to be kq1 over x squared, where this is q1. What's the electric field from this charge? Well, it's going to be kq2 over, and I guess its distance is 2 minus x all squared. Is that okay? And you know what I want to figure out? When these are equal, because that's when they'll cancel each other out. That's going to be my equation. Hey, the k's cancel. Nice. And q1 is 1 micro coulomb. And q2 is 3 micro coulombs. Hey, the micros cancel. I, okay, that's my equation. 1 over x squared equals 3 over 2 minus x squared. I think I'm going to cross multiply. Because it's 1 fraction equals 1 fraction. I mean, it started out kind of complicated, but it's 1 fraction equals 1 fraction. I'll get this. 3x squared equals minus x all squared. Ready, Zay? You had me for math 12 last year. What kind of an equation is this? What kind of an equation is this, folks? Quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. Uh, let's get rid of the brackets, Zay. I'm going to, this is 2 minus x times 2 minus x. So don't just go, oh, it's 4 plus x squared. It, the squared doesn't distribute on. I have to multiply, foil it out, right? Uh, I'll get, uh, 3x squared equals, I think I'll get 4 minus 4x plus x squared, I think, when I FOIL it out. Yes, I will. Now what? It's a quadratic. Make it equal to 0, and then we're going to factor in quadratic. Now, uh, Zay, although it would be easier to minus this to this side, I hate the quadratic term being negative, so I'm going to minus the x squared plus the 4x and minus the 4. So the equation that I'm going to end up with, I'm going to do it up here, is going to be 2x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. GCF? Yeah. What? For what it's worth, you can go divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. You can use your graded equation solving and turn this into a 1x squared plus 2x minus 2 equals 0. And then the question is, does that factor? Are there numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 2? Don't think so. Are there? Negative 2 is negative 2 and positive. No. So you know how I'm going to solve this quadratic formula. And I'll bet you I'll get one positive x value and one negative x value. And I'm probably going to say, oh, the negative x value doesn't make any sense now because we're talking about a distance. Uh, I don't have the quadratic solver on my little virtual graphing calculator. But I do have a solver. Those of you who have the TIs, have you ever pressed math and up arrow? Because there's a solver there. Really, Mr. Dick? Yeah, there is. It's not very good, which is why I don't emphasize it. There's the equation, uh, alpha solved. I think 0.73. Ah, eh, there it is. There. 
Is that going to be on your written Brett? No. Is that even going to be on your test? Probably not. I might feel comfy as, hey, here's a yucky multiple choice. But in all honesty, it's not. It's a good thinking question, though, and it's a nice review of, hey, we pulled the quadratic formula out and dusted it off a little bit. And it's just nice to see someone doing the homework again. Woohoo! Any others? Number 10? Or no? Okay. Number 10 is a nice review of forces as well. So here's our charge, Josh. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Josh, Jacob. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. What else? What's lifting it up? Well, it says it's being in a vertically upward. You know what? Fe. The electric force is pushing it up. Find the net force on this particle. Who's winning? I'm not sure, but when it says it's speed after 2.5 seconds, I'm thinking maybe the upwards force is winning. If I'm wrong, I'll just get a negative acceleration and I'll know to quickly flip it. But I think I'm going to go... Well, actually, they don't want MA. They want the net force. So there's F net right there. MG is pretty easy. That's going to be 0.125 times 9.8. What about Fe? I can't go KQ1, Q2 over R squared because I don't have two charges. But we said at the end of the last lesson, we said, you know what? There is another way to find the force. Now, if you know the charge at that location and the electric field at that location, QE is also force. Came out of rewriting this one, getting that force by itself. So I think it's going to be QE, it's going to be 2.5. Ooh, careful. What letter is that? Not a micro. What letter is that? No, no, in front of the C. A lowercase m. That's not micro. That's not mu milli, uh, which I think is 10 to the negative 3. I have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, 2,250. So there's your QE. This should give me the net force. 2.5, oh good gosh, I'm wrong mode, let's try that again, 2.5 to the negative 3 times 2250 minus 0.125 times 9.8, the net force is 4.4 newtons, and positive tells me, hey, that is the winner, Woo hey, there it is, 4.4 newtons. Do you know, that's the net force, do you know the mass on the object, of the object? Say yes. Could you then find the acceleration? Divide this by 0.125, there's my net acceleration. And VI is zero, there's A, there's T, find V final. VF equals VI plus AT, oh it's going to be that times 2.5 because vi is zero. There's 88 meters per second. Nice little review of several units. Here's why I kind of like that question. I'm not saying I like that question. I like the question. I like the, I'm just saying ah, it's nice. Review some good stuff. Any others? To me, the key one, the big one. You've got to be able to handle something like uh, number 13. Let's say the electric field between two charges. that are in a nice straight line. Extra bonus if you can find the electric field between two charges that are at angles to each other, adding them tip to tail. That's an A-level question. That I'd feel comfy as a nasty multiple choice, but that's not going to be written. I heard, can I what? I'll get you started on it. Okay. So the electric, I'll call this uh, charge one. I'll call this charge two. Hey, why not? We're going to be using the point charge equation because it's creating the electric field. It's creating electric field. The electric field from charge 1 is going to be KQ1 over R1 squared. What letter is in front of the Coulombs this time? 
nano, which I think is 10 to the negative 9. I think it's on your formula sheet, I think. Oh, ha! <laughs> there you go. Apparently, I added that. Okay. You're going to have the electric field 2, which is going to be KQ2 over R2 squared. Is that okay so far, Brett? Direction. This guy here, which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? Up. Right? Direction from charge 2, which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? I think towards charge 2. And this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to draw those fields, Brett. You're going to draw them tip to tail and use Pythagoras. That's the resultant. And then that'll be the angle. They did north of east. I think the one that I've drawn is east going to be east of north. If I solve this, I would end up getting 27 degrees east of north, because that is east of north. But I take both. Is that okay? Sorry, I'd like to do it, but I want to get today's lesson done. Okay. Lesson four. Hey, Mr. Duick. Emily, you have a question. What's your question, Emily? What I actually did a couple of years ago is I combined lessons one, two, and three into one and two. Okay. I kind of combined them and saved us a day. Joel? Thank you. So we're going to start out with electric potential energy because if charges want to, and I'm going to use the term fall, move, but falling is an easier analogy for us. Um, if they want to fall, they must have some potential energy. And it's going to turn into kinetic or some other type of energy. We define electric potential energy, and I'm going to use PE. You just have to clue in. We're not talking about gravity. Don't use MGH or negative big G, big M, little m over R. In a manner similar to orbital gravity potential energy. We say that electric potential energy reflects the work that must be done to move a charge from a point near the charge Q out to infinity. This is how we defined gravitational potential energy, because we said we could no longer use MGH because the force, we couldn't use force times distance because the force was changing. The further you got away from the planet, the weaker gravity got. Well, the further you get away from the charge, the weaker the electric field, the weaker the electric force. The closer you get to the charge, the stronger the electric field, the stronger you get to the force. So we have to have some way of taking into account the distance. If we start here, and we end up at rest, the amount of energy required if this was a positive charge and this was a negative charge and it wanted to fall to the left, and we had to lift, 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 and end up out at infinity, that's how much potential energy it's gained. That's how much work we did on that charge. And then if we let it go, it would want to fall back down. Oh, but if we were all the way at infinity, we would say that it was no longer being tugged at and it would have no more energy. Zero. Recall that the force between the two charges is not constant, and it varies with distance. There's the force between two point charges. Also recall that with a varying force, with a changing force, we can't use force times distance. We must instead find the area under a force versus distance graph using calculus. And I'm just going to go straight to the punchline. For what it's worth, potential energy is K Q1 Q2 over R. Don't write this next bit down, but compare that with potential energy for gravity, which was big G, M1, M2 over R. They look fairly similar. Hey, Mr. Duick, you're going to put a negative in front of there? No. But you had a negative in front of the, uh, ener uh, the, the, p the gravitational potential energy. That was because things only fell in one direction. By this relationship, at infinite distance, the potential energy is zero because nothing's tugging on you anymore. You're so far away from the charge that you've actually gotten away from its electric field. And here's what we're going to say. If you put a negative and a positive in there, unlike charges would have negative times positive, that will give you a negative potential energy, which means it wants to fall down. This makes sense because it takes works to separate the charges due to their electrical attraction. In other words, if I go back to this diagram here, 
don't write this down. But if I tell you that this is positive and this is negative, if I were to crunch the numbers, Kayla, what is a positive times a negative? Positive times a negative. Help us out here. Mitsu. Positive times a negative is what, Kayla? Negative. Right now it has negative potential energy. Stay with me. As I move it further away, I'm adding energy, I'm adding energy, I'm adding energy. Kayla, stay with me. I'm adding energy, I'm adding energy, I'm adding energy, and I end up at zero, which means I must start out at negative. Because if I have a negative number and I go plus, 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 that's the only way I can get to zero. Okay. Unlike charges have negative energy, and that's why we don't need to put a negative in front. The negative will be introduced by the polarity, by the sign of the charges. What about a positive charge? Suppose this was positive. Which way does it want to fall? Which way does this thing want to fall if that's positive? Emily, to the right. How much energy will it have out here? Zero, because we've defined zero to be out of infinity. As it falls, it's losing energy, so it must start out with a positive number, losing energy, losing energy, losing energy, falling slower and slower and slower and slower, and eventually comes to a stop way out here because it's gone so far away that it no longer experiences a force. Okay. Example one. Find the potential energy of a negative 75 microcoulomb charge that is 3 centimeters from a positive 120 microcoulomb charge. Let's do that first. Potential energy for point charges is K, Q1, Q2, over R. K is still 9 times 10 to the 9th. Charge 1 is 120 microcoulombs. Charge 2 is negative 75 microcoulombs. And you'll notice, Nicole, I don't know if you remember, when I did electric field and forces, after I did the equation, I did a little blurb saying that some books put an absolute value sign around the charges to say that you don't put the polarity, you don't put the negatives and positives in for forces and fields. You don't, because we decide the direction, they're vectors. You do put the negative charges in for energies. You put the polarities in. Uh, over, Nicole, what's my distance? What's R? Good. How much potential energy does this charge have right now at that location? It's going to be negative. Negative what? 2,700. Anybody else? Yeah? Units, eh? Energy. Energy. Joules. Yes? Yes? Zay, which way does this charge want to fall? You guys understand what I mean by want to fall? It's not gravity, but it's an easy way for us to imagine it. Which way does this want to fall? Left or right? Left. So... For us to move it out to here, we would have to add energy because it doesn't want to go that way. How much energy will it have out here once it gets out to infinity? Zero. Would we have to add energy? And if we add to 2,700, would that get us to zero? Yeah. So this, this, this works okay. In fact, B says, write a work energy equation if we move out to infinity. Work is your change in potential and change in kinetic. Hey, this looks an awful lot like orbital potential energy and kinetic energy. Oh, what does it say in the brackets right here, Mitchell? Assume what? Okay. <coughs> hey, Mitch, what's change in anything? Finest, minus, finest, minus, minus, initial? Try it again. Scene one, act one, take two. Go ahead. Potential energy final minus potential energy initial. And what did Zay say our final potential energy was way, way out here? How much did we have? 
No. Out, way, way out here. What do we have out in infinity? Zero. Zero. There's our final, right? Minus. Mitchell. What's our initial? How much work would it take? Positive. It's saying, oh, by the way, the outside force would have to do positive or would have to give it some energy. And that's the answer to part C, by the way. I did B and C in one line. Here is my energy, work energy equation. When I plug in my numbers, zero out of infinity. So the trickiest part here I find our vendor kids can't remember when you put positives and negatives in for charges and when you don't. You ready? Listen close. Forces and fields forget the signs. Scalars put the signs in. It's the best I got. If you're doing forces and fields, forget the signs. Don't put negatives and positives in. We decide the direction, Katie, by using if it's forces, like charges repel, and like charges attract. If it's electric fields, which way would a positive charge want to move it could? But for scalars in this unit, you have to put the plus or minus in. And that's going to make a huge difference to your final answers sometimes. We'll write this down somewhere. So if you did write that down already, great. But we'll actually put this down later. By this relationship, turn the page. By this relationship, like charges have positive potential energy. And this makes sense since it takes work to overcome the electrical repulsion and push the charges together. Okay? So, let's reverse the question. Instead of falling away, let's bring it in. How much energy do I have right now out at infinity? Zero. Does this charge want to move closer to this fixed positive charge? Well, what's the polarity of this charge, positive or negative? So does it want to fall to the left? Which means if I want to move it to the left, I've got to do work. Those little invisible angels or whatever the outside force is has to do some work because we're pushing, 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 pushing. Example two says, find the work required for an external agent, invisible angels, to place a positive 2.5 milli Coulomb charge five meters away from a one po positive 1.75 milli Coulomb charge. Note, milli equals 10 to the negative three. Assume that our positive 2.5 milli Coulomb charge is initially an infinite distance away or far enough away that it essentially feels the force. Okay. Right? Let's assume we're starting and ending at rest. Wink. And we'll do that unless the question clearly says, how fast are you going? Or it clearly shows a VI. Well, then we'll say, I guess we're not starting or ending at rest. Connor, what's changing anything? So this is going to be potential energy final minus potential energy initial. Now the final potential energy is going to be K Q1 Q2 over our final minus what's my initial potential energy? Where am I starting? Out at infinity? What's my initial potential energy? Ah! Nice. I'll put it in there just so I know what we did. So it's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th one point seven five times ten to the negative three two point five they're both positive so I am men mentally putting the positive signs in here it's just we don't write positive signs two point five times ten to the negative three all over five How much work would it take to move that charge out from infinity to within five meters of this fixed charge? Fixed means it's not moving. If they're both moving, we need calculus and can't handle it. What do you get?
What'd you get, Brianna? By the way, usually these answers are in the thousands or tens of thousands, usually. So if you're getting a big answer, probably okay. What'd you get? Seven eight 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 zero seven eight eight zero is that right? Yeah, people nodding. By the way, what if this had been negative and this had been negative? What if this has been negative and this had been negative? Does it want to fall to the left if they're both negative? Still repelled. You'd have two negatives there. Kayla, what's a negative times a negative? Still get the same answer. Okay, so it takes care as, as long as you put the signs in, the math takes care of itself. So for energy, a scalar, we will include the plus or minus. And what I remember is scalar signs. Put the signs in for the scalar. And I remember forces and fields forget the signs. We'll write this down over the next couple of days. Unlike forces and electric fields, both of which are vectors, where we decided the direction ahead of time by looking at the polarity, and so we didn't include them. Also, if there's no external agent pushing the charges around, if there's no invisible angels, then the energy of the system will be conserved. Hey, that means we can use conservation of energy. For example, an electron is originally this far from a proton, not out at infinity, so it has some energy, and it's at rest. You know what? Let's underline at rest. Which way does it want to fall? Think about it. Which way does this want to fall? Can you give me left or right, please? Left. When you let it go, just like if you were dropping a rock, it wants to fall to the left, which means it must have some energy. What's that energy going to become as it falls? It has potential energy. As it falls, it's going to go faster and faster and faster and faster. You know what, Katie? The potential is going to get transformed into kinetic. It says, find its speed when it's that far from the proton. Is there a change in height here? Yeah. Is there a change in speed here? Yeah. Did they say how much work? Say no. This is a job for conservation of energy. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Joel, why can't I do this? Could you just read that for me, please? Thank you. Now potential, this is electric potential energy mat, so no MGH stuff. This is going to be K Q1 Q2 over R initial equals a half M V final squared. Kinetic doesn't change, by the way, all year long. Kinetic is going to be a half M V squared plus K Q1, Q2 over R final. I don't think I'm going to try and get the V by itself algebraically. I am going to minus this over, and then I'm going to crunch the numbers. Okay? So I'm going to get K, Q1, Q2, all over R initial, minus K, Q1, Q2, all over R final. That equals a half M V squared. Nine times 10 to the ninth. Oh, they didn't tell me the charge. Oh, wait a minute, proton. Yes, Caitlin, you're right. Look it up. Or you have it in front. What, what's the charge on a proton? It's elementary. 
No pun intended. Pun intended. It's charged on a proton. No, that's the mass. It's kilograms. What's the charge on a proton? Caitlin! It's the elementary charge. It's the same both on a proton and on an electron, except an electron is negative. That's why I said it's elementary. Okay? Got to know this. So, what's the elementary charge? Positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. This is an electron. Hey, what's the charge on an electron? Negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. All over R initial. Oh, it's originally 2.5 times 10 to the negative 11. Minus. Nine times ten to the ninth. Q one. Positive one point six times ten to the negative nineteen. Q two. Negative one point six times ten to the negative nineteen. All over our final, which is one times ten to the negative eleven. That equals a half m v final squared. All right, get your calculators out. It's going to take some number crunching here. You get for the first term negative 9.216 times 10 to the negative 18. Someone double check me. Yeah. Negative 9.216 times 10 to the negative 18 minus. And then for the second term, all I need to change is my radius. 1.0. For the second term, you get negative 2.304 times 10 to negative 17. That equals a half m v squared. Kayla, by the way, what's a minus minus the same as? Okay, see, because this minus, this the first negative came from this, that negative came from that negative right there. So it's okay. Uh, I'm going to crunch this. So I had, what was it? Negative 9.216 times 10 to the negative 18 minus my last answer. I get when I go final minus, or sorry, when I go initial minus final, 1.3824 times 10 to the negative 17. Is that right? We're not done. We're going to use this, though. And I'm running out of room here. 1.3824 1 times 10 to the negative 17 equals a half m v final squared. Now I can try and get v by itself. How would I get the v by itself? Times by 2, and then... Divide by, divide by which m? What's moving? The proton or the electron? The electron? How much you want to bet on your blue sheet somewhere you have the mass of an electron? You do on your formula sheet. So I'm going to get this. V equals the square root of 2 times... 1.3824 times 10 to the negative 17 divided by, what's the mass of an electron? It's not, I know it's 9.11. It's small. Negative 31? So I think I can take this number times by 2, divide by 9.11 
e negative 31. What the? Oh, and then square root. Five point five times ten to the what? What do you get? Yes, I'm making you do it. I turned the calculator off on purpose. What do you get? Times ten to the what? Sixth? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that fast? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I think electrons move pretty fast. I've never seen one. They must move pretty fast. Probably faster than our eyes can see. I like example three. I like example three. Number three is a nice question. I like example three. Example four it says in the diagram below, A, find the potential energy of the system. B, find the force and direction on the upper 1.5 microcoulomb charge. C, find the electric field and direction at point X. This is a little overkill. I'm not going to do example four. I will one year, but not this year. Okay. Number one, homework. Number one, but you can skip that bad boy. Two is good. Three is good. Five is good. Six is good. Eight is good. <laughs> 